welcome back today we are gonna look at some of the things that I have uh, written to the project since last time I realized that I've lost a lot of video um, in when I was uh, editing the video and um, unfortunately it's not usable so what I have to do now is explain the changes I've done since last time here in the QG creator on the computer side of the motor controller um, a lot have happened since since last time the serial handler looks almost like it did before except we have a, a new mutex you know the mutex we had before has been split up into a read mutex and a write mutex and this is because there was a lock where the main thread of the program would lock itself uh, because it would both be reading and writing to the mutexes at the same time. Which means that I had to separate them out. Um, other than that, I've also added some uh, code to read the data frequency we get from the Arduino in order to get the speed of, um, um, of, the, of the data the data rate, so to say, from the Arduino. And the Arduino is set up to be able to change the data rate based on how many uh, cycles it um, gathers pulses from the motor. If we go here to the Arduino side, data transmission counter is set to a thousand, which means that this loop runs a thousand times before it sends the pin changes that has accumulated. When it's set to a thousand, it's uh, it's not a lot of pin changes that uh, it, that happens. Um, if the motor is running full speed, it's only two to three pin changes. So, and um, you may say that three pulses is not a lot. That's true, but but these uh, this loop runs uh, quite fast. So we will probably have in the vicinity of four hundred readings per second. And down here, uh, we've added a serial event function. The serial event function um, is there to wait, or is called when there's data to be read from the serial port. This is data from the computer. And it basically just reads a byte and makes an analog write to the motor controller. This is the analog write that was up here before. Now it's down here. So this basically just means that the Arduino um, couples uh, just relays the data from the computer to the motor controller and it sends back the, the measured speed of the motor. So that's the code that you saw last time. Um, I've also added more code here in the uh, QT creator. There's a code to actually regulate the motor based on the a target speed. And then there's code to actually visualize the regulator. Um, the scope widget is a piece of code that I've written for another project. It's just um, a widget that plots live data on a scope. And I'm not really going to go through that. You can see it and It'll be part of the project, so when I publish it, uh, you can take it if you want it. I've also added a, a slider uh, with some information um, class, and you'll see that too. It's pretty simple. But the biggest thing is probably the wheel widget. This is where the actual regulation is going on. This is where the, uh, the proportional force, the differential force, and the integral forces are calculated and summarized in a total force that is sent to the motor. And this happens every time the motor uh, receives a speed value from the Arduino, or every time the computer program receives a speed value from the Arduino, it immediately, it immediately um, passes it and sends a, a regulation value based on, that value, on, the, on the data that it fetched. Um, the way that it's receiving data uh, from the serial handler 
is with signals and slots on the serial handler like you saw last time we created a wheel data signal and on the wheel widget we have an on wheel data slot so this is where it receives the wheel data from the serial handler if we go into on wheel data you will see that it calculates the speed uh, by taking the cir circumference of the wheel multiplied it uh, by the data frequency that we are measuring in the serial handler then it takes the speed byte which is the byte we got from the arduino and divides it per uh, with the amount of pulses per rotation this will give us the speed in meters per second and then that speed is sent to the regulate function now this speed will be an integer of value between zero and just about three and you might think how can you use that to regulate a motor well it's all about the data frequency and up in the regulate uh, function um, we have uh, we are uh, smoothing out the the speed uh, with a lerp function uh, linear interpolation um, where we are only going two percent towards the new current speed from the motor and that's a lot of filtering but that actually smooths out the uh, speed uh, measured from the arduino uh, and it, it gives us a value that um, is uh, is usable for regulation a float value and um, then we uh, take a difference uh, va a value we calculate the difference between the target speed and the current speed we make an integral force calculation and the integral force is basically just the difference between the last uh, difference and the new current difference uh, multiplied by a factor an integral factor this is the f the factors are the values that we use to fine tune the regulation um, then we calculate a differential force a differential force is basically just uh, the difference is summarized over time uh, this is why it's called the differential force is because it, it's actually the it's the area under the graph so if you if you plotted the difference over time then the differential force would be the uh, area under the graph proportional force is basically just the difference multiplied by the proportional factor and of course we also have the differential factor these are just two uh, scalars that we can use to uh, fine-tune the uh, regulation and then here we uh, clamp the differential force the thing with the differential force is that it's a kind of memory because it's gonna com uh, um, continuously collect all the differences it can grow out of hand and so I've uh, decided to clamp it to the minimum and the maximum value that we can send to the motor. And this just makes it easier to restart uh, the regulator. And um, then the total force is calculated. That just summarizes the proportional force, the integral force and the differential force. And this is then turned into a byte value because that is the... Uh, what we can do with the analog write on the Arduino side, we have a byte uh, at us, our disposal for analog write, which means we have a value between 0 and 255. And for this reason, I'm clamping the total force to a value between 0 and 255, and I'm emitting a regulation signal here from the wheel widget. And that, in turn, is a signal that goes back into the serial handler. If we go into the serial handler, you'll see there is a on regulation slot, which basically just takes the value and puts it in the right data buffer. That's all it does. And this is where we had the lockup that forced us to make two mutexes. Let's uh, actually sh see uh, what it looks like if we run it. 
All right, so here we are with the widget and the new widget. As you can see, we have a scope down here in the bottom where we're actually plotting some input values and some output values to the motor. Up in the top here, we have a bar that shows the current speed of the motor. Here we have a slider where I can control the target speed of so the regulator will meet the target speed. And then we have a proportional factor, an integral factor, and a differential factor for the regulator. All right, so if I increase the target speed of the motor uh, or the regulator, uh, you can see the graph is showing the changes I'm making to the target speed. And nothing else is happening right now because I haven't given it any proportional factor or integral factor. However, if I uh, give it a bit of a proportional factor, you will see that um, the motor actually begins running. If I give it a more proportional factor, you see the motor begins to approach the actual target speed. And um, if I go all the way to the end, uh, right here, right now, with this these factors, the actual speed of the motor never reaches the target speed. And that is a feature with the proportional factor or proportional regulators is that they will never actually hit the target speed. However, if I add some differential factor to the regulator, you will see that the green line, which is the differential force, grows up and the uh, proportional uh, uh, force goes down to zero. And um, this is because the, the differential force will slowly pro uh, replace um, the proportional force. So now if I try and stop the motor, you'll see the uh, proportional force grows up and then down again because the differential force slowly replaces it and makes the, the current speed uh, reach the target speed. If I release the motor, you can see the uh, proportional factor goes down and is slowly being replaced then by the differential factor. When we have, um, with these factors right now, we have a bit of a delay between the um, reaction and the force applied. So if I stop the motor, the motor kind of goes down in speed and then reaches the current speed or the target speed. And this phenomenon, you see right here, is called the hysteresis. The delayed reaction from the re regulator is called is what's called the hysteresis. If we only have um, a differential factor in the regulator, you will see that there's a bit of a resonance going on. If I add a lot of differential factor to the regulator, you will see that it can go into resonance and if I add a lot more, it can eventually go completely out of control. Like here, the regulator is going a lot, very much out of control. And this is of course not a desired feature with a regulator. So what we want to do is we want to minimize uh, this um, delayed kind of uh, resonance, uh, this delay kind of response. The good thing about the proportional factor and the differential factor is that the forces that they produce cancel each other out. So if we add uh, proportional factors to the regulator and I stop it now with my hand and release, you see that the proportional factor counteracts the uh, differential factor a little bit and this avoids the the resonance in the differential factor. So if I if I amp up the differential factor here, you see that it's no longer going into resonance. If I remove the proportional factor, the differential factor will never really settle down. If I add some proportional factor, then you see that it kind of cancels out the this uh, this overreaction from the differential factor. 
Unfortunately, the integral factor doesn't have any impact on this regulator because in order to get some data, uh, we can actually use something from the motor. We, remember, we're getting the data from the regulator in pulses. Uh, we have to filter out the forces, uh, the data, um, so that we get a more consistent speed data from the regulator. And um, because we're doing that, we're basically filtering out all the immediate reactions from the regulator, which means that the integral factor here doesn't really have any influence at all on the motor. So you may ask, how is this related to a self-balancing robot? Well, what we could do is uh, instead of feeding the speed into the regulator, we could feed the orientation of the robot into the regulator. And by then, and then uh, couple the direction so that if it falls in one direction, it drives in the other direction. By doing that, we should be able to make a robot that can at least balance on its own, although it wouldn't know how fast it's going and couldn't be able to and couldn't uh, regulate its position in the world, it should be able to balance. And so this is going to be the next project. The next video is going to be about designing the robot and building the robot. Uh, we're going to add another motor to it. We're going to add another motor controller to it. And we're going to put the, uh, make a small uh, robot frame that we're going to add it all to. And yeah, so tune in next time and you'll see the robot as it takes shape. <laughs>